10 Things Your Body Language Says About You. Number 10. Hair. Personal hygiene and grooming, though maybe not body language per se, has a lot to do with how people judge your personality. In men and women, having clean and well-managed hair can go a long way in presenting yourself in a professional manner. If you take the time to wash, comb, and get a haircut, it will signify to others that you are organized, prepared, and good at time management. On the other hand, if you have messy hair or don't take the time to manage your coif, it can give others the impression that you are stressed out or just don't care. The way you deal with age is another big factor. If you are comfortable with letting your hair go gray, but still keep it neat, others may view you as secure and confident. If you go gray and your hair is a mess, this may put off the signal that you are poor or strange. If your hair is dyed well, it can show confidence. However, if it is obviously dyed or ill-maintained, this can come off as insecurity. The length of your hair is also important. If you are a woman with long hair, this can mean you are free-spirited, whereas short, well-managed hair can signal that you are determined and detail-oriented. If you are a man with a short, stylish haircut, people may see you as more intelligent than a man with long, flowing hair, which stereotypically comes off as lazy or anti-authority. A prominent indicator in men is how they deal with going bald. A self-aware or confident man usually deals with balding by embracing it and shaving it, or if they do have any hair on the sides, it is well-groomed. An insecure man might either try to cover it up with a toupee or comb over, while a sloppy or apathetic man might let it be patchy and wispy or hide it under a hat. Number 9. Smile. Your smile can say a lot about you. If you have a genuine smile that is matched by honesty in your eyes, you can come off as being successful and fun to be around. But even if you have a genuine smile and your eyes are saying something else, you can come off as a psychopath. There are many different kinds of smiles. Some people even smile when they are uncomfortable, nervous, or afraid. One of the most revealing ways that people smile is when they are forced to do it. A lot of the time, this is what can separate a good actor from a bad one, or a confident person from an anxious one. There are two major ways to spot a fake smile on someone. First, if they are smiling with their whole mouth and their bottom teeth are visible, it is probably not a real smile. And if it is, this person seems like they are deranged. When a person naturally smiles, they usually only show the top row of teeth, because the muscles in your mouth only move upward instead of all around, as when you try to show the bottom. Second, if a person's eyes don't look like they are almost squinting and their cheeks don't raise to create wrinkles, they are probably faking, or again, a weirdo. Our intuition is usually very good at picking up these factors, but once you really think about it, it looks especially odd. Next time you take a family picture, use these tips to not look crazy. Number 8. Scratching your nose. One of the easiest ways to tell if someone is lying is if they are constantly touching or scratching their nose. Now this could just be nervousness or allergies, but if those reasons don't make sense during a line of questioning, they are most likely lying. The reason for this is that when a person lies, commonly their blood pressure elevates, which in turn causes blood vessels to expand in order to try and calm our cardiovascular systems down and let more blood through. When the blood vessels in the nose expand, the nose swells, kind of like Pinocchio's, and releases histamine, which makes the nose feel itchy. Another thing you can infer from the nose is that when a person's nostrils flare, it is signaling that they are either getting ready for a fight or extremely agitated. You can also tell when a person is irritated or something isn't up to their liking if their nose wrinkles upwards. But don't use these signs to make a point in everyday life because they can also be caused by a person simply smelling something gross. Number 7. Lip Biting our lips are used to communicate more messages than just the ones we speak. Lips can pout to show disdain, they can pucker to be cute or playful, and they can be pursed to show that we are holding back our anger. But the different messages that are conveyed when biting our lips are so wide-ranging that they can be misconstrued without proper context and can often end in awkward situations. Yes, a person biting their lips seductively can be a signal that they are interested in you, but there is a fine line between seductive lips, nervous lips, and angry lips. A person may bite their lips as a nervous tick, or if they are trying to concentrate on something. They also may be biting their lips to avoid unleashing their anger. A good way to tell the difference between these is by looking at the cues from the eyes and other facial features. If they bite their lips and make relaxed eye contact with you, it just might be love. If they are biting their lips and their eyes are moving around, maybe just making eye contact by coincidence, they're probably just thinking or nervous. If their eyes are intense and furrowed while biting their lip, you might want to apologize for whatever you did or run away. Number 6. Shrugging. We have all shrugged our shoulders at times to give the classic I don't know gesture, but there are various types of shoulder shrugging that can give away a person's true thoughts. The cartoonish exaggerated shrug combined with a smirk usually does mean that a person is saying they aren't sure. A reserved shrug, when a person just slightly raises their shoulders, sometimes subconsciously, could be their body's way of telling you that they are struggling to understand something. A fast, purposeful shrug may indicate that a person is either trying to avoid answering the question for fear of being caught in a lie, that they are brushing you off because they don't think you would understand the answer, or that they have nothing nice to say. If you are to travel to China or a Chinese community, you should try and avoid shrugging altogether because the Chinese view shrugging as a sign that you are harboring animosity towards them or lack respect for who you are talking to, which makes us wonder if people in China have a totally different interpretation of mob movies. 
Number five. Crossed arms. Crossing your arms can mean a multitude of different things, depending on the situation. It is commonly misinterpreted that when a person crosses their arms, they are closing themselves off and relaying a message that they aren't open to interaction. This is rarely true, as crossing your arms is one of the more complex ways our bodies communicate what we are thinking. Many times, people will cross their arms if they are in a tense situation or are feeling anxious. You can usually distinguish this type of arm crossing by the person changing the position of their arms or reaching up to touch their face or neck. This gesture can also be used to show frustration, like when a child is pouting or a parent is scolding. You can tell this one by the tension in their arms. When a person crosses their arms in frustration, it looks as if they are tightly locked together, and the person may even be squeezing their arms. It can also be interpreted as a person trying to show strength. This is when a person confidently sticks out their chest and may even flex their arm muscles in order to give the don't mess with me look. Other reasons a person may cross their arms include feeling insecure, showing pride, contemplation, the instinct to cover where we feel vulnerable, relieving stress, and of course, being cold. A person may also cross their arms in a relaxed fashion when they are in a social setting and someone else does it as a show of comfort or solidarity. Number four. Posture. Our posture is one of the most powerful ways that humans indicate status and can control the way we are viewed by others. If you think about cartoons, the hero is always depicted as standing straight while the villain is usually hunched, wringing his hands. This is no coincidence, as good posture is seen as reflecting a positive self-image, while bad posture can show insecurity and negativity. However, bad posture, unlike the way it is portrayed, a result of laziness or villainy, commonly has a psychological or physical issue that causes it. A person may have bad posture because of social anxiety and the desire to not be seen by others. Tall people who are self-conscious can be found having bad posture because of their wanting to fit in or get on another person's level. Bad posture can also be a result of spinal issues such as kyphosis, scoliosis, and other back maladies. Having poor posture can also cause severe back problems, sometimes creating a chicken and egg scenario. These type of issues are most likely to blame for our subconscious evolutionary instinct, that people with good posture are viewed as authoritative alphas, while people with bad posture are weak or inferior, and not genetically fit for breeding. So try and sit up straight if you want to get a date. Number 3. Talking with hands. Many people use their hands to help them describe or work through what they are saying, and in fact, there is scientific data that backs this up. Studies have shown that people that talk with their hands are frequently better at communicating in general, even when their hands aren't seen by the person they are talking to. The studies also show that people who talk with their hands versus people who don't come off as more engaging, entertaining, and relatable, but there is also a right and wrong way to use this tool. If you move your hands too quickly while talking, you can come off as impatient. If your hands are palms down while you talk, this can either indicate that you are confident or it can seem like you are brushing off an issue. On the flip side, if you talk with your hands up, it can make you seem open and welcoming. And if you are ever speaking in public, it is best not to point at your audience, as this comes off as demanding and breaks the fourth wall, seeming intrusive towards the audience's personal space. This is why most politicians have adopted different hand gestures to replace pointing, a la the presidential mini thumbs up. If you are talking to a person who just had a tragedy in their life, you can also come off as callous if you don't move your hands at all. The studies even found that in this scenario, the people that touch their chest or put their hand to their heart when listening come off as the most compassionate. Number 2. Eye Contact Eye contact can be a fickle mistress when it comes to body language. Just a second or two can be the difference between someone thinking you are telling the truth or lying, or appearing interested in what they are saying or that you want to attack them. Generally, body language experts say that there is a three second limit of eye contact, after which you may be sending the wrong message. Any eye contact after three seconds is usually reserved for someone you have romantic interests in or are intentionally trying to scare or intimidate. When engaged in an argument or a line of questioning, it is quite common for liars to use the intimidation stare tactic, either purposefully or subconsciously. So if the accused person is locking eyes with the accuser for much longer than usual, that person is probably lying. This tactic is also used by liars as to avoid looking like they are thinking of excuses. The three second rule doesn't apply to all cultures though, as in some countries it is natural for people to stare at each other as they walk by on the street. So it is always good to brush up on the specific body language etiquette of a country you plan to visit. Number 1. Leg Position The body language that is exhibited in your legs can be hard to change, but in situations such as an interview, date, or a meeting, it can be the difference between being taken seriously and not. If you lock your legs together at the ankles when seated, you'll most likely come off as nervous, reserved, or even afraid, so this is a good one to try and avoid. If you sit with your legs crossed, with your knee over your ankle, you appear as if you are laid back and open, but not necessarily in charge of a situation. Sometimes, you can even come off as exposed or easy to sway, as this position infers that you are relaxed and unguarded. If you want to appear like you are in charge of a situation, or that you mean business, the most authoritative position you can sit in is with both feet on the ground and your legs even with your shoulders. This signals that you are a dominant person by giving the impression that you either use or take up more space, in effect claiming your spot in the room and sending the message that you should be taken seriously.
subscribe for more videos.